after our days at the COP26 climate conference in Glasgow, we caught the very last ferry from Corin. We were heading to Andrea and Gareth's remote croft in the highlands near the west coast, where we'd booked a couple of nights in their wooden cabin. The next morning, Andrea made us a generous vegan breakfast, including the hedgehog mushrooms Josh picked the day before. Then we were introduced to Charlotte and Boris, two adorable and very excitable Kuna Kuna pigs. Watching them devour their breakfast and explore their world with so much happy curiosity, I felt like we had a lot in common. <laughs> Most pigs never get to see the outdoors, but this lucky pair are helping Andrea and Gareth to prepare this patch of land for growing veg for the family. Andrea's family clearly see themselves as belonging to the land, more than owners of it. They know the land will care for them if they care for it. Scottish land, past and present, hasn't always been so lucky with its guardians. We headed out for a hike near Castle Chiram, a ruin which has witnessed many centuries of people raiding and settling and defending and protecting and buying up this land. On the way we found a bridge over the River Shiel, it once was the joint property of two Victorian Englishmen whose large private estates met in the middle of this river. One was Charles Donnell Rudd. Rudd had gone to southern Africa and deceived a king called Loban Gula into signing an irreversible contract. The king got a boat, 1,000 guns and 100 pounds a month. Rudd and his partners got extensive control of the land and its people and all of the gold and diamonds they could extract. The other landowner was the second Baron Howard of Glossop, descendant of the medieval king Edward I of England. Edward I became known as the Hammer of the Scots for his wars to conquer Scotland. This family has passed hereditary powers and property down the male line for 700 years, all the way to the current Duke of Norfolk, who has an unelected seat in Parliament. The ruin of Castle Chiram sits on a tidal island in Loch Moidart. When we arrived, the path to it was still under the sea. Some say Somerled built the castle here in the 12th century. Somerled is celebrated as a Scottish hero who defended this land from Viking raiders. In fact, his own ancestry included Vikings who settled on the land. Somerled's kingdom blended Irish Gaelic and Norse culture, and they brought pigs here too, <laughs> hundreds of years before Charlotte and Boris. Simple tales of Scottish heroes versus colonists usually get a bit more complex when you look closely, as everyone's family came here from foreign lands if you go back far enough. 
the beautiful island Elan Shonan, on the opposite side of the loch, is privately owned by the sister of billionaire Sir Richard Branson. She has her three main homes in London, Sussex and Marrakesh. In interviews, Vanessa Branson talks about her love for her island and how she prioritizes its conservation. Nonetheless, as a visitor to a ruined castle from a seemingly distant past of kingdoms and powerful nobles, it's surprising for me to discover that most of Scotland's private land still remains in the hands of fewer than 500 rich families from the Trumps to our own royal family. Compared to other countries, it's an exceptionally unequal concentration of ownership and control that hasn't improved since the Victorian times, when Charles Rudd and Baron Howard of Glossop had huge estates here. The tide had fallen enough for us to wade to the island and I was so excited to see the fortress up close. Contrary to the legend of Summerled, it was more likely that his descendant, Christina McRory, built Castle Chiram in the 14th century, at the time of Robert the Bruce. Her niece, Amy McRory, extended it. For centuries, it remained the seat of their descendants. But when the 14th clan chief supported the Jacobite cause, against the reigning king and queen. British government forces seized the castle in 1692. The story doesn't end here. During the Jacobite Rising in 1715, the clan recaptured the castle. But because the Jacobite rebellion failed, they decided to set it alight to keep it out of the hands of the monarchy. Castle Chiram has been an empty shell since then. It stayed in the clan's ownership until 1905, when it was bought by that same English aristocrat, the second Baron Howard of Glossop, who owned the nearby estate and half of that bridge. I wonder what its future holds. The castle is still being fought over. But this century, through legal paperwork and public inquiries, rather than armed men. At the moment, Castle Chiram is locked and crumbling. Proposals were put forward by the current millionaire owner, Lex Brown, who, according to reports, wanted to make it his private home, with public access for just 49 days a year to a little museum here. Historic Scotland said no to that deal. The castle's fate has been in limbo now for years. What do you think should happen? The violent changes of control are most remembered. But I love trying to imagine all of the different people these stone walls have sheltered throughout the centuries. All the things they have witnessed on peaceful days like this one. Perhaps over the centuries, Christina McRory 
and the chiefs of Clan MacDonald and the British soldiers stationed here and the second Baron Howard of Glossop and Lex Brown have all sat on these rocks watching the seals foraging among the seaweed wondering what the future holds for their special island. <laughs> 